from last time, just know that your homework is the same. Like there's only one homework assignment per section. So your homework um, has already been assigned for this section, but we need to finish it up. So I think this was section 2.6. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to look at one more um, where we are going to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to combine terms. So let's say these are the functions and then I ask you to find f plus g, f minus g, f times g and then f divided by g and each domain. So the one we did on Monday had um, linear functions and I wanted to make sure I included one that had a little more complicated functions. Um, but when you're asked to find f plus g, like don't overthink this. Um, you're not allowed to combine terms if they're not alike. So essentially the function is just the first root plus the second root, okay? You're not allowed to combine those unless you're multiplying or dividing. <clears throat> um, but when we have to come up with the domain, it's a little bit strange here, right? So what's the issue with the domain? We want to make sure that we're only taking the square root of what kind of numbers? Positive. Positives, okay? So we have that we want x plus 4 to be greater than or equal to 0. But we also have a second root, right? And we want to make sure that is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So if you solve for both of these, if you subtract four here, you'll get x is greater than or equal to negative four. Here you'll get x is greater than or equal to one. Okay. But you want both of these things to happen. In other words, it can't work for one and not the other. So when you go to graph this, because remember, graphing is helpful if we're trying to find interval notation. Okay. On the one hand, greater than 4 looks like this. But on the other hand, greater than 1 looks like this. Okay. And it turns out that you want the overlapped section. Okay. Because you want it to work for both. Anything that's in the red here where I drew it is not going to work for this function right here. Okay. So the domain would just be anything in black where I went over the red. So it's everything from 1 to infinity. <clears throat> All right, so f minus g, very similar. What's the only change when we do f minus g? Instead of a plus sign between them, what are we going to have? A minus sign between them, right? Do I need to redo the domain or won't it be the same? Like, aren't they the same square roots and we would still want them to be greater than or equal to zero? Okay. So try to look for things like that on the homework where you've already done the work and, you know, you don't have to do it again. Um, all right. So multiplication and division are the most challenging on this one. So for F times G, um, we want to do square root of x plus 4 times square root of x minus 1. So we end up getting the square root of x plus 4 times x minus 1. When you multiply, you are allowed to combine them into 1. Now you could FOIL that, but we're not going to. It's not necessary. Um, and the reason we're not going to FOIL it is because we will want to know when this is greater than 0 anyway, and so we'll want it in factored form. So you'd just be putting it right back in this form. <clears throat> so the issue here, though, is you have two parts under the root. What do you not want the whole thing to be? The whole thing can't be what kind of number? Negative, Negative right? So let's talk about what would make each of these zero, and then we're going to draw a number line and talk about what we need to do. So um, x equals negative 4 and x equals 1, or what would make it equal to 0. So here's my number line, and here's negative 4, and here's 1. Okay. So remember, I want this to be positive. Okay. I want square roots of positive numbers. Okay. So there's two options here. I need it to either be a positive times a positive, okay. or what else would give me? A positive result. 
what else would be okay? Like just, I'm not talking about numbers, I'm talking about just general. A negative times a negative would also be okay, right? Because what would a negative times a negative give me? A positive, right? What, what's not going to be okay? Yeah, like one of them is one and the other one is, one's negative and one's positive. Okay, so essentially um, what we have to do is kind of think about the number line and think about what would happen. Okay, so technically we're supposed to pick test points, but I just want to kind of show you that I think we can do this kind of mentally. Okay, so for instance, let's think about something over here. Okay, what would be a number that's over here where I'm pointing with my pen? Negative five, right? If you plug in a negative five here and here, you're going to get a negative something, doesn't even matter what it is, times a negative something, right? So when you do a negative times a negative, what are you going to get? A positive. So I'm just going to say positive there. Okay. What's something in between negative four and one? There's more than one thing, but what's something really nice in between the two? Negative two, but even nicer than that. Zero. Zero's in between. Zero's always really nice to plug in. Okay, so negative two would work just fine. That's not a wrong answer. It's just I think zero's nicer. Now what happens if you plug in zero, just kind of mentally? You're going to get a positive times a what? A negative. So in the middle here, we're getting what kind of results? Negatives. Okay, and we already talked about that that's not going to be okay, right? And then finally, let's look up here, right? Um, what would be something to the right of this one? Two. two, right? So if you plug in two, notice we're a positive here, right? What are we here? Well, no, it's a positive. Two minus one is positive, right? So we get a positive times a positive, which is a what? Okay, it's a positive, right? So in other words, this section's okay. This section is not, and this section's okay. Okay. Why is the middle section not okay again? Because what does it give us? What kind of answer under the root? A negative, right? So in the end, we just have a domain of negative infinity to negative 4, including negative 4, because 0 under is okay, and then everything from 1 to infinity. So when you plug those in, you don't change the sign? Like when you were plug, like when you were just like plugging like Well, you like never do that. You only change. You're talking about the greater than sign. You only change you know, the like greater than. Positive and negative sign. So like when you plugged in the two for the four, it was a positive two, and when you plugged in the two for the one, it was. It's positive, right? Two minus two minus one is positive. So that's oh, my point. Okay. Yeah, it's a positive okay. times a positive. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was so confused. Okay, so in other words, what do we just not want to get? We don't want anything in between these because anything in between them makes one of them positive while the other one is negative, and that's a no-no, okay? So I know that's a little bit of a strange one, um, but multiplication and division is a little bit stranger here. And then last but not least, you're supposed to find division. So that would be x plus 4, square root of x plus 4 over the square root of x minus 1. Okay. Now, I'm okay if you leave it like this, but just know you could write it as one solid square root if you wanted. I say could because I don't really think that's simpler, but either one of those would be acceptable, but you cannot cancel x's out. If you're tempted to do that, you can't do that when you're adding and subtracting. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at maybe this one, right? When we get to domain, we need to worry about certain x's, right? So on the one hand, we already did this one. We already did x minus 1 needs to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? But also x can't be 1 itself. Why can't x be 1 itself? Because if I plug in 1, what do I get in the denominator that's not allowed? No, you wouldn't get negative. You'd get what? 0. 0, and that's the off-limits one, right? So we know that um, that has to be true, right? But also we have the x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to zero from before, okay? So in other words, look at the addition one up here, okay? We get the same result. So we get x is greater than or equal to one. So I'm gonna circle both of these. So when we go to graph this, we want everything bigger than one, but we also wanna not include one itself, okay? So how are we gonna not include one itself? We wanna go this way but we want to not include that, so we could just use like an open circle if we wanted. So the domain ends up being the same as it was for addition and subtraction. It's just that we have an open circle at one this time. Okay, and the reason we have an open circle is because we don't want to include one itself because one itself would give us zero in the denominator. So I know I went kind of fast on this part, but remember we already did this part up here, 
Okay, it's the exact same inequality that we had up there. So that's why I didn't really show a whole lot of work there. Okay, so if you've already done the work, you can use previous steps um, to kind of speed your process along. Okay, so last time, and then we finished it up this time, we talked about how we can add, subtract, multiply, divide. Okay, but there is a fifth way um, that I don't think is as obvious as those four. A fifth way to combine functions called composition of functions. Notice I'm putting a star by this, which means it's something that I want you to know for sure. <clears throat> so a composition of functions is putting a function inside another. So it is not the same as multiplying, which a lot of students sometimes mistake it for multiplication. It's not the same. Okay, so it's like a plug-in process. It's not a multiplication. So here's the symbol for it. When you see it, you need to know, hey, that's composition. It's basically um, like a little circle. Oh, that was mine for a minute. Um, so it's like a, the size of a multiplication dot, but it's open. Okay, so that's what the symbol is. So when you see F and then the little circle G, that's not a letter O, okay? That's not the word fog. It's F composition G, okay? Um, so you can literally say this as F of G. Okay, that's how you would read that statement. <clears throat> Or another way to say it is that it would be f of g of x like this. But they're really saying the same thing. It's just the second notation has x in it. Okay? So I'm going to put a star by this notation. This is the one that I'm going to want you to use the most often because we're the most familiar with function notation already. We already know how to do f of things and g of things. <coughs> So before we start, a good rule of thumb to remember is always start with the inside function. If you can remember that, it makes um, what we're doing today a lot easier. Okay, we're actually going to be spending most of the day talking about something to do with composition of functions. Okay, so let's say that, um, let's look at a couple examples. So what example did we just end with? Was that... Five, yeah. Um, so let's say that I give you these two functions, 2x and x plus 7. And I tell you that I want you to find f composition g, but also g composition f. Okay, so remember, that's not a letter O. It's like a little smaller than an O. It's like the size of a multiplication dot. Okay, so we're going to do these side by side. So try to like um, save enough room to do another one off to the side. So let's start with F composition G. Now this means F of G of X. That's the meaning of that composition symbol. Okay, and where did I tell you to always start in general? On the inside. So I want to start here. Okay, so in other words, I don't want to mess with F right now. I'm just going to bring it down. But I know what G is. I can replace G with something because I was given what it was equal to, right? What is G equal to according to the problem? X plus 7, right? G is equal to F, X plus 7. But then if we kind of ignore this, notice this is not asking you for anything different than we've already done this semester, right? What does F of whatever mean? It doesn't matter what's here. What are you supposed to do with what's here? You're supposed to go do what in the F equation? plug it in, right? So the F equation looks like 2 times X, so instead we're going to write 2 times X plus 7, and then just clean it up using distributive property. So if you distribute that 2, you get 2X plus 14. So notice it's not multiplying one by another, it's actually plugging one into another. <clears throat> Alright, so let's compare that with G composition F. So this means g of f of x. Okay, so where do I need to start this time? If we start on the inside, as always, we're starting with which function this time? Starting with f, yes. 
So we're going to bring the g part down, and then we're going to ask ourselves, what was f of x originally, right? And what was it? 2x, right? But then this just means go find your g equation and do what with the 2x? Plug it in, yes. So here's g, x plus 7, so what will g of 2x be? In place of x, we're going to put in 2x, and it'll be 2x plus 7, okay? So notice, generally speaking, we don't get the same answer when we switch the order of the letters, okay? Now, there will be some special functions that we'll <coughs> talk about towards the end of the lecture today where they will end up being the same, but it's rare, okay? So we wouldn't expect for them to be the same. All right, so let's look at um, a couple more. You know, if you can figure out how to just kind of baby step these problems, I promise you can do them. You just have to remember what to begin with. You always want to begin with which piece? The inside piece, yes. Okay, so f of g and g of f. Um, and I want you to find f of g of 2. So it's important that we know how to read this. This doesn't mean f of g times 2. It means we're actually going to plug in 2. That's what it means. Okay. So maybe before we start, let's make sure we know what this says. This is f of g of 2. Okay. It is not doubling everything that we get for f of g. That's not what it means. Okay. So let's do them kind of side by side again. So remember... F composition G just means F of G. So maybe you'll get to the point where we don't need to write this, but I just like to write it every time so that we, you don't forget what you're doing later on. Okay, so we're going to start on the inside. So we're going to pull the outside piece down, and we're going to replace G of X with what it is, right? What is G of X for this problem? X minus 2, good. Okay. So then how do we do this? That's telling us, hey, go look at f and do what with it? Plug it in. Plug it in, right? So instead of square root of x, it's going to look like square root of x minus 2. Okay, there's nothing you can do with that. Okay, we can't take the square root of that. It's an addition or, or subtraction, so we just got to leave it. <clears throat> okay, so let's contrast that with the other direction, g of f of x. So we want to start here. Okay, so again, you bring down your outside term and you ask yourself, what was the inside piece, right? So what was the inside piece? Like, what is f of x given to us as? Square root of x, right? So this is saying, go look at g and stick that in, right? So just make sure you write this really clearly. Notice this would be square root of x and then minus 2 outside the square root. That is different than what we got here, right, where the minus 2 is inside. Okay, so make sure you're really, really clear on that. <clears throat> um, so then if we want to find f of g of 2, okay, we already have an f of g equation. Okay, so we could, by the way, if we wanted to, we could change this to f of g of 2 like this, and then which part would we do first? We would do g of 2, figure out what that is, right? and then plug that in. But we already have a formula for f of g, so we can use that too. So in other words, we just need to plug um, 2 into the f of g equation. Notice, not this one, right, because that's g of f. It asked us for f of g. So we're just going to replace um, x with 2. And notice we end up getting an answer of 0. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do one more. I think this is the most challenging one, and then we're going to kind of move on to something else, but honestly, it's going to come back around to composition of functions anyway. So f is 4x minus 3, and g is 5x squared minus 2.
All right, so I want you to find, um, we're going to do it in this order. So I want you to first find f of g of 1. Then I want you to find f of g of x. And then I want you to find g of f of x. Okay. Sometimes notice in this one, I instead of just saying f composition g, I said of x. Okay, so you'll see it in both ways. That's why I wanted to write it like this as opposed to how I wrote it in example seven. All right, so I want to show you how you can do the number ones maybe a little quicker. So f of g of one means this right here, right? It means f of g of one written in this way. So then we always start where? On the inside, okay? So in other words, I'm not ready to solve this yet, but let's figure out what g of 1 is, because I can do that. That shouldn't be a problem for me. So how do I find g of 1? Plug it in, right? So it's going to be 5 times 1 squared minus 2. Okay, make sure you do your order of operations, so I should be squaring the 1 before I worry about the 5, right? So what is 1 squared? 1, right? And then times 5 is 5, right? Minus 2 would be 3. So this isn't my answer, right? This is just what's going to get plugged in up here, okay? So in other words, this is what g of 1 is equal to. So now I'm finding f of 3 because I'm replacing g of 1 with what I found it to be, which was 3, okay? But then what is this saying? So it's just like two parts, basically. This is saying go to f and do what with the 3? Plug that in, right, but just to the f equation. So it would be 4 times 3 minus 3, or 12 minus 3, which is what? Just 9. Okay. So even with numbers, you're essentially doing um, the same thing. Okay, so let's compare f of g to g of f of x. Okay, I think if you can do this one, you can do just about any difficulty level that you might get on my math lab, remember, because everybody gets different questions. So let's rewrite this one. This is the same as saying f of g of x. Okay, so I'm going to start here because that's where the inside is. So my first step is do nothing with the outside. Just bring it down but I want to replace g of x with what I um, know that it is, right? What is g of x for this problem? Yeah. So 5x squared minus 2. So I know that is a little more complicated thing to plug in, but the process is the same, right? I just need to come to my f equation, and I need to plug that in. So instead of 4x minus 3, I'm going to have 4 times this parentheses minus 3. And then notice it's pretty easy to clean this up. I just need to do distributive property and then see if I have any like terms. So 4 times 5x squared is 20x squared. 4 times a minus 2 is minus 8. Don't forget your minus 3. So it looks like I do have some like terms, and when I combine them, this is what I get. <clears throat> okay, so for that one, I'm essentially sticking a squared equation into an x to the first power equation. All right, so let's talk about what I'm asking you to do here is pretty different. Okay, even though it looks very similar, we just swapped the locations of f and g, but it actually makes a big difference. So here we're going to start with the f equation. So this is going to be g of 4x minus 3, which on first observation might look easier than what we just did, but actually it's a little more challenging because I need to plug that into which equation? The one that has the squared in it, right? So g is 5x squared minus 2. Okay, so what's going to be g of something then? It's going to be 5 times that thing squared minus 2. So the structure stays the same. I just plug in whatever is in the parentheses. Um, so then the cleanup factor is the difficult part here, I think. So first of all, do not just square both of these. You're not allowed to distribute a squared when you're adding and subtracting. You don't, won't get the right result. 
<clears throat> so before we worry about the 5, let's do FOIL on the 4x minus 3 times 4x minus 3. Okay, so we all should know how to FOIL, but let's do it kind of slow, right? 4x times 4x is what? 16x to the 2 power, right? 4x minus 3x is negative 12x, right? But then inside I'm going to get a second negative 12x. So what's negative 12x minus 12x? Negative 24x. So I'm combining that middle two steps. If you don't like that, you can do them separately if you want. I'm just trying to keep um, the amount of writing we have to do at a minimum. Negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. And then close your parentheses and don't forget about your minus 2. Okay, so all I did in that step was what? I didn't worry about the 5. I didn't worry about the minus 2. I just did what four-letter process? FOIL, right? First, outside, inside, last. Okay. But now I am ready to deal with the 5. Just to make sure we know that this 5 gets distributed everywhere, right? So we're going to get kind of large numbers here. 5 times 16 is 80. 5 times minus 24 is minus 120. And then 5 times 9 is 45. Okay, the 5 does not distribute to the 2 because it's outside. So in the end, we get um, kind of a surprisingly large numbered equation that looks like this. Okay, so I think this is probably the best demonstration of the fact that we do not get anywhere close to the same answer when we swap the letters. Okay, so generally speaking, that's, that's the case. <clears throat> Okay, so just make sure you take a problem like this, you know, a baby step at a time. We just did one little step at a time. We didn't try to throw five steps all at once, okay? Which, judging by your competency work, some of you are trying to do that. You're trying to do like 42 steps in one line. <laughs>